My name is Audrey Schantz and I'm a watercolor artist and a watercolor teacher. We are on day 26 of a 30 day watercolor tips and tricks series. So I'm glad you're here. Um, today we're going to be talking about the color wheel. I think that's going to be awesome. I've been looking forward to this one a lot. I think it's what I would have wanted to learn. So, um, okay, we'll talk about supplies in a moment, but for, for now, let's actually just everybody you can grab your little booklet um, so we can go through day 26. Also, if you're filling out your um, calendar, we're getting really far, so that's exciting too. So day 26, it looks like this color wheel. Opposite colors complement each other well, and they are also used in combination to neutralize or calm down colors. You can mix primary colors to create secondary colors, and it also shows warm and cool colors. So I just said a lot of things, right? Let's grab our color wheel. Where is it at? Let's see, it's somewhere back here in the back of your little booklet. And if you don't have the booklet, if you want to look up an image of the color wheel, that's probably a good idea. It looks like this. And um, okay, so let's go through it step by step. Opposite colors complement each other well. So if you're looking for um, just a color palette to use when you're creating a little painting, and if you were to naturally lean towards opposites, you would probably find that it looks very pleasing. You'll notice that it's used a lot. So that would be, let me put it over here, that would be um, purple and yellow. That was my colors for my, the city I grew up in, purple and yellow. And then we've got red and green. You see it in Christmas, but you also see it in nature, how much a, a beautiful red rose stands out against green, right? Uh, and then we have blue and orange. Those are the third pair. So we can get into like um, yellow orange is opposite from, you know, we would look at it and go from a, what would that be like a indigo? But anyways, you can get more complicated about it, but we're keeping it simple with just three pairs, which means it's really easy to memorize. You have three things to memorize when you're looking at what are the opposites. Um, they are also used in combination to neutralize or calm down your colors. And that is where you're going to really, I would say, use it the most in color mixing is that you, like we always say, like you have 36 colors to work with, right? But you can get as many colors as you want. And this is how we lean into the color wheel and to color theory to mix colors that we like. So one that we've done a lot on here is taking a purple and adding a little bit of some version of yellow to turn it into more of a plum color or something that's just a little bit more um, of a neutralized version of a purple. Um, so we will talk about that as we work today. And then you can mix primary colors to create secondary colors. That's where the red, blue, and yellow, you know, you can mix those to, to make up orange, green, and purple. And you can play with those if you need to be refreshed on that. I feel like for most of us, it's been a long time since you've thought about those, but that's just something else about the color wheel. And then it shows the warm and the cool colors, warm colors being on this side, something you'd find in like a sunset. And then these ones over here being the cool colors. Notice I just put the six on here because we do want to keep it really simple. Um, so that's it for color wheel. We will talk about that more as we do our little painting of the day, which is going to be something like this. I feel like you never know where I'm going to go with these things, do you? So um, we will be making a muted version of blues, yellows, and greens to get to here. So make sure if you've got a candle, you get it lit. If you've got a nice beverage or sweater, you get cozy and comfy and we will get started. Okay, let's quickly go through our supplies for today. You need a pencil and a kneaded eraser, just like always, we're gonna keep it simple. A This is a size 10 round watercolor brush, a felt tip pen, I've got a three inch by three inch square of cold press watercolor paper. You need to have some kind of watercolor paints, um, a towel and some water. If you wanna have a little spray bottle for your paints, that's great, and if you have a heat gun, um, or like an old hair dryer that will work great as well. Also, I wanted to quick show you guys if you bought the paint set. Look, they on like this one that most of us are using, they finally changed it to just turned it into this for um, your paint swatches. Remember how they had the colors all kinds of backwards? So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, I guess let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move the things out of the way that I do not need. And, um, 
we will begin by observing together. We've got these two. I started with the one on the left and then I ended up with the one on the right, which is the one we're going to use for today. But notice that they're very similar. There's hardly any differences in it, but we do notice like a vibrant orange over here. Well, we're working on color theory and the color wheel. So we're gonna be muting our colors on purpose so we know how, but that doesn't mean you actually have to use those colors. Um, you could just practice making them and then do whatever you want. So cute little house. It's basically centered. Maybe there might be a little bit of extra space Space on the right um, but centered would be absolutely fine for this one and it has okay we're just gonna get into one now it has um, three windows across here they're all in a straight line so if I go like this I notice yep they're all lined up I have one window in on the roof and it is like in the center of things okay and it is also pretty much directly above this window and then like technically the door but the door seems to be over to the right a little bit to accommodate for these cute leaves and we've got two trees the one on this side is bigger than the one on this side they both start with a little trunk that comes up and splits if you don't want yours to be that way oh yeah they do it on this one too um then maybe you would make one solid and one split or something and um what else is there to say about this one? Well, it, we'll mainly be talking about the colors, but I just love this as a little sketch. We do, we can get into line weight a little bit when we do our ink. Um, I like that it's pretty neutral and it's like kind of, it's color, it's colorful without being the Crayola 8-pack. I think sometimes it's really nice to have that skill where when you want your colors vibrant, you've got it. And when you don't, you know what to do about that. So also notice it does have that horizon line or that horizontal line and then some large shapes that we can find. So um, that's probably good for observing. We'll probably do a little bit more as we get started. <clears throat> so make sure you're comfy and we will grab our pencil and our eraser. And the first and most important thing I'll say about our sketching is that to press lightly so that we can erase easily. So as I look at this, if I were to just lay my pencil down right here, that's about how high this line is. So if you want to guess on that and pressing lightly because I don't know if I want to move this or not, I like to try to find it on both sides and connect them. It doesn't matter how you get here though. We do want it to be a, a straight line so you can use the edge of your paper here to get there. It might be easier for you if you actually turn it all the way upside down so this is above it. You know what I mean? So you can use that as your guideline. And from here, we are going to um, start with our large shapes. And we can do this one here first. It is a bit of a rectangle. And like we said, a little bit more space on the right. It's not important, but it will give us space for some of these things. So if we were to just kind of mark where we think it might start and end, and we're going to kind of create See, I'm bringing it in already. We're going to create this box first. So guess on how high it's going to be. You know, if I were to look at this and this triangle, um, this is a little bit taller than the triangle, but then there's extra space up here. You know, so let's wing it for a minute. And let's turn this into a little box. So I've got marks, one, two, three, right? And I'm going to take these and create vertical lines here. And then close them off on top. Now turn your paper if it's more helpful. And I think this looks good. Yeah, why change it? This doesn't need to be so specific that it's like an exact replica. So we'll leave that. And I want to make sure that this triangle that sits on top of it is centered. So first I want to find the point up here, making sure I leave space above it because I noticed this tree goes taller and still has space. So this this can't go too far. I maybe can fit, oh look, like a pencil, almost two pencils above it. So when we make that much observation, it really helps you to decide where this should end. And I've got this. Now I have one, two, three points. So I can turn my paper and connect my dots, still press lightly in case you want to move the whole thing. We don't know yet, which is why we're doing our big shapes, but not adding our details in until we feel solid on our big shapes. 
Uh, okay, I did something that I don't like, and that's that the triangle actually is wider, and I didn't notice that. So um, I, instead of taking it to the corners here, I'm gonna make I'm gonna put dots a little bit wider out, and before I even erase it, I can just connect these ones, and I'm gonna like this shape a lot better. It's gonna be more like a hat, you know. And I'll connect it here as well and then get in with my kneaded eraser. I'm going to pinch it so it's small and fits in those small spaces. And then I'll get rid of that first line. I don't mind showing you guys mistakes because it's like we're all dealing with them. And then you can see how I adjust it when it's me. Okay, better. Great. Um, from here, let's get the shape of these big treetops just because they're kind of our next biggest shapes. Let's start with this one. I like the guides that we have. I can't quite fit a pencil above it, so it's getting pretty close to the top. And the dot that I put here, I want to sort of be at the top of its curve. That's gonna be helpful to me. It ends down here. I've got about this much space between the top of the house. I'm gonna just put some dots in here. It gets close, but not to the edge. And as I look at the bottom of this roof line, I go, oh, it's that much lower. So this is the shape that I want, but I wanna do it in these little sketchy curvy lines. So I'm going to, if you wanna watch this part, move your pencil around a bunch. You can do zigzags, you can turn it into full, there's full on loops in here. And you can come up with whatever shape feels good to you. If it feels better, <coughs> excuse me, to practice on the back, you know, you can do a shape like this where it's a cloud. It's these nice little rainbow curves that match up. You can do total zigzag back and forth like this. I like this combo of just, you know, moving my pencil around as much as I can. And if there are parts that I don't like, I'll erase those in a minute. But then I get this really kind of cool shape this way. This is my preference, but maybe one of these or something else is yours. So go with your heart, you know? I've got this and so far I like it. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Um, if you didn't want to, for now, add any of those lines, you can absolutely do the same thing where we find these points. I'm looking at this triangle and noticing where this circle intersects. That's how I put a dot. Same thing, this circle intersects down here right under the windows. The windows aren't there yet, but we're using our imagination. And if I'm using my pencil again as a guide, I can fit my pencil next to it this time. So I'll leave just a little bit more space over there. And if you want to put a dot where you think it's going to get up to, this time what I want to point out is you don't have to do this line with pencil. You can just do a very light line um, as a circle with pencil and then paint the whole thing. And then at the border, just add that kooky line with your pen. There's no right or wrong way, <coughs> excuse me. But what I don't want is it to be like super dark. So I, I'll actually leave one one way and one the other to show you that it doesn't matter. But I might lighten it up a little bit. Remember when we paint over our pencil with watercolor paint, it sort of locks it in. But anything that's on the outside, like you can see right here, I can take my pencil later and I can erase what was left over on the outside and didn't get covered by watercolor paint. So I like this shape, this feels pretty good to me. Um, and now you see we have our biggest shapes in there. If I were just to keep going with big shapes, I could put the door in here. Let's notice what it is. Uh, it almost looks like a tongue if you think about it, but it is straight on both sides and then it starts to curve about here. And then this looks like you could fit a circle in it. All right, so that's what we're going for. I know I need to leave space for the windows with space above them and below them, and I need a border on my door. And the reason I'm pointing these things out is that helps me just account for them as I get started with this. So I'm gonna try like here and pretty much centered. I think centered is fine. We don't need to worry about keeping it off to one side. The way I'm finding center, let me get rid of this, is that I want to put a dot halfway between my exterior lines of my house. And I don't need a lot of space on either side, so maybe here and here. Now I've got one, two, and three. Remember we said it comes up straight first. And then I basically could fit a circle up here. So you can do it that way if you want, and then erase what you don't need. 
See that? It helps me to make sure that this top is a circle if I really do load that bottom on there. Now I don't need the bottom, and I'll get rid of it. I can get rid of any of those dots that stick out a little bit too much as well. Okay, so look at that. We're doing awesome. Uh, this line that runs alongside of a line is called an aura. I learned that from my friend Kelly Bluen, who I know introduced a lot of you to this channel. And I'm putting a little dot on either side and maybe the top again, just so that I don't make it too wide on one spot. And then turn your paper if you want to. If you right away notice, oh, it's too wide, bring it in a little bit. This doesn't need to be too wide. So if that's the case, adjust it before you do the whole thing, you know. And I'm going to take, notice I'm turning my paper. It's easier to me to keep that same nice curve and keep that same distance to my line if I turn my paper. So I did. Got this. Uh, one thing that I am not that great at is noticing, like if I do vertical lines, sometimes they are not lined up with the side of my paper. If that's the case for you too, I don't know if I have anything to use for that right now, but like you could grab a piece of paper or you could grab a ruler or whatever, but you'd want to it needs to be where you can line up the side and then check yourself. Like even this, I have a perfectly straight line close to this one so I can use it to check myself. Um, or you can put it on the bottom like this, line up the bottom if you know your, this is perfectly shaped and I used a cutting board so I know it, it pretty much is. And then you can use it, obviously you can use a ruler too, but we don't always have a ruler with us. So good enough and we're going to go in and we're going to start adding in our details. So I feel like we just, my brain really wants to see the trunks of these trees in here before we do anything next. So let's get those in. Let's notice that I could fit at least a tree trunk between the tree and the house. So we'll leave a little bit of space there and maybe come up to about this high. You can do these as vertical lines widening at the bottom. And if I wanted to have it be that branching out situation, I can take one and curve it up and then bring it down to here and just find another way to get that up to the top. I actually kind of want to do one like that and then one not this time, or maybe just like the little challenge of making them slightly different from each other. Don't forget that we are using both pencil and eraser. So you're not locked into anything you do initially. I'm gonna make this one a little bit, <laughs> I was gonna say wider, but since this tree is smaller, I don't know if I should do that. This is me kind of overthinking it. Just get some kind of branches up there and that'll be great. And um, from here, I think the, we're like almost there. The chimney's not gonna matter. The leaves aren't gonna matter. What does matter is making sure that these windows line up and that this one is centered on the house. So let's do the big center one first. We want some space below it. So I'm gonna make a horizontal line. I'm using this top as my guide and to to make sure this is straight I'm using this as my guide it's going to match that and let's decide how high it's going to be and I'm using this line as my guide for this line and then I'm going to connect them now you can do rounded corners or really perfectly straight corners it's up to you Sometimes I like the cuteness of a rounded corner and sometimes I want the precision of a really perfectly straight corner. And from here, you're gonna look at what size of a box you created and you will decide, do you put another one inside of it or outside of it? If yours is small, you might go on the outside. If it is big, you might go on the inside. And I think for me, I'm gonna go inside. You're always just making these little decisions as you go. Cute. This one's more square, this one's more rectangle, and I don't care, right? It does not matter. <clears throat> and from here, we need these little windows. They do need to be small because we need to fit space above them and below them. I'm gonna use this and this window and the center of this door all to guide me. If it's helpful to you, you could take that little scrap piece of paper or what a little ruler or something and find the center line. You know, you can always draw it on there if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. We're just going to use the things that we have. I'm going to do this one small. I want to make it, you know, I need to plan a little bit that it is a box with a box inside of it. 
So I'm doing the biggest that I can get it for now so that I, I'm going to put the box on the inside. It's pretty well lined up. Notice we have equal distance here, 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 and here, basically. Notice where I pointed on the two outsides and between the windows. So remember, we're using the bottom of the roof as our guide. And sometimes I do it this way. See, I'm just going one, two, three. They all line up. Same thing down here. And then I will connect them. And now we don't need perfection. So if you're looking at this and you're going, ah, I see more space on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. This one does look a little bit smaller to me though. So I'm gonna to try to match it to the outsides. All of this while we have a pencil really sets us well, up well for doing it when we have a brush. So within these, I'm gonna do, a, it's just a line alongside of another line. We're just creating this little frame inside. And in watercolor, it's really nice if you can plan for something um, that's going to be white that divides up your space for when you paint. So we'll be able to paint this and this and this white space will keep it so we could do this and while it's still wet paint those it's kind of cool um i want a door handle mine's going to be on this side it's up to you just a tiny circle and we're going to get our bricks in i did mine by starting at the top here and coming out both ways remember when i say we're doing the ymca that this time your arms are up pretty high here's your head <laughs> I am such a weirdo sometimes and I love it okay so the first two are going to have that angle coming out if you want to you can find a spot maybe near the doorknob that they're going to be straight across just and then start to divide up your space to me that just makes sure my curve is going to make sense so straight and then this one and then you're just kind of um using those as a guide to decide what direction these lines are gonna go in. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's get into our chimney. I like it being tall and skinny. To me, it's charming. But if you want your short or different shape or if you want antenna or, um, I don't know, a little, I don't know what else goes on top of a house, but if you want something else, stick it on there. This is just a little bit taller or the same height as the point I do want to try to make sure my lines are straight so I'm looking at it and I don't think they are I don't know why this direction of line is my hardest I do better with horizontal so that being true sometimes I just turn my paper and then it's a little tiny think about it like a brick on top it's a it's a rectangle on top of your skinny little chimney What else? Um, if you wanted to add any of these lines, these little horizontal lines, you can do it now. I like to do them unfinished sometimes. Like they don't go all the way across. They just kind of add something. And they can be equal distant or not. You can do a few of them or load the whole thing with lines. You can measure them exactly or wing it. It doesn't matter. And I do think it's nice to have these little bits in a tree. And let me explain why. Because to me, it takes this shape and it helps me understand that there could be groups of branches. Look at this. If I put this little um, part of a circle down here, it makes me go, oh, this could be these big. And now this rounded shape turns into several rounded shapes. Do you see it? And then I can, if I were to shade it, I would go, oh, I might put a shadow right here because that's the bottom of a clump of branches. Same thing here. So it's just kind of planning that way and it's something that's helpful to me so if you want to add just a couple of those doesn't matter these ones you will see if you don't go over them exactly with your pen so do it if you want um just lightly a little bit of that all it is is a squiggly line that is kind of like a smile shape and i'm doing it more to the bottom right what else? Uh, I'm going to, I'm looking through everything real quick and I think we're time, we're ready for the leaves. You can do these any way that you want. We've done leaves lots of times on here. So just kind of like always for a leaf, I'm going to start with doing the branch first, adding one to the end, and then you can either alternate them, you know, in height, like one 
and then come down and do the right and keep going. Or you can do them at the same, like this. You can change the shape. They could be circles. You are the boss of this. And so let's start. I see one to the left of the door. It starts coming like right at the base of the door up like this. I try to stop before the leaf so I don't have to erase anything. So here's a leaf. These can be any size that you decide. Uh, I do like it not totally covering this because I like, I just want to see the color of that, but it doesn't matter if you did cover it up. There is one sprig to either side now. You guys will do cute stuff with this. I know it. <laughs> and now I'm just adding a few without any rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of sticking it on there. Oh, this one has two stems. One comes up first and then there's another. So up another and if you want to come down to overlap the grass more you can remember you can use your eraser if you put these on there and you don't love it you can change it oh my goodness we are about done with our cutie little sketch go ahead and look at yours if there are any lines that go through leaves like this if you can get it erased get your kneaded eraser tiny enough to get those out of there you might be happy you did if you can't don't worry about it if anything got really dark maybe lighten it up if you can see the dots that you put like for example i can kind of see my dot up here and i don't want to you know i can lighten it up a little bit we don't need to worry because we're going to go in with pen but you know you can do that if you want to if you want to sketch these little leaves on the background i guess we could do that now too or you can go with your brush later um, because they're so tiny, you know, if you were to use your brush and try to do the little method where we, you know, press and lift and kind of swipe it on organically with our brush, you might find that you won't get this shape, you know, um, you could do, you could use your brush to draw it first and then just fill in the center might be a way, but you also can just do this and then kind of lighten them up so that you can barely see them, but they're there. My colors are pretty light today, so if yours are light, then usually that's when you care that your pencil is also light, but if you're going to paint really dark, it does not matter. I like mine, so I'm going to move my eraser, I'm going to move my pencil, and we are going to start to mix up some colors, and since today is about the color wheel, we will talk about that a little bit Um Again, so mainly, even though we did talk about all of these, the main thing is they these colors are used in combination or to neutralize or calm down your colors. So if we keep this here, okay, um, the thing that matters is that we find our opposites. So uh, if I want blue, okay, first you can spray down your paints if you want to. And from here, if I want to have blue, what the challenge will be for today is to take that blue, look on our color wheel and find the color opposite. So that's orange. And I want to neutralize my blue a bit. So I am dip my brush into my water jar and I'm going to grab any kind of blue. I think I will do the sixth one up from the bottom if you're using this paint set. Otherwise, just grab a blue. Don't overthink it. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and come back so it's more of a puddle. And I'm looking at it. I'm moving my brush around so I can see through it a little bit to see what color it is. And from here, it's a nice vibrant blue. And since what we want is more of a neutralized color, I will get into my orange. Now, which orange? That's for you to decide. I don't want to get into like the nitty gritty with you. Uh, I'm going to try this one, which is one of the lighter ones. Like, but sometimes it's like, just play with it because you want a color that you like. So if I tell you, use this orange and you're like, actually, I wanted that one, then that's what you should be doing. I'm deciding if I like it. Okay. And if I want a little bit of blue back, I will do very small movements. So I just took a tiny bit off of here and added it in and I'm going to add more water. Remember that in watercolor to get our colors lighter, we add water. This is cute. It's a little bit leaning towards teal. And so I want a little bit more of that blue back in there. This is pretty lovely. Too dark for me, so I'm adding more water. 
and that feels pretty good. Um, now remember, you're not tied down to just orange and blue only. Let's say you look at this and you're like, I really wish it had some, I don't know what in it, um, navy blue. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of that and add it in. And now I really like that color. So play, but just we're learning the thing. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create our yellows and we wanted to mute them. So if we're doing yellow, we'll grab some yellow. We'll add a tiny bit of purple and we're gonna see what we think. Remember where you're going with this, door, windows, trees. So first you can play to experiment, grab some yellow. Now when you grab purple, do the tiniest amount. Purple is a takeover color. <laughs> um, but you also need to think, is this the color I want? So now I'm gonna grab the other yellow. Try that instead, because it leans more towards what I wanna see in a tree. And then tiny, tiny bits of purple. If I get to this and I'm like, okay, I learned it, but I don't wanna use it, then I certainly won't. I might start another puddle right here and maybe add some brown or some orange to it and get in a different color that I wanna see in fall trees. Okay, so and remember now this is orange. If I wanted to neutralize it, I could add the tiny bit of blue. Doesn't matter which one, you can play with it. Oh, look at that. I love what it did, so I'm leaving it. Okay, and now we're going to get to our green and we're going to neutralize our green. So green is just basically for a couple of the leaves and for the grass at the bottom. I will grab some green, any one that you want. I'm leaning towards more one with yellow in it, which is one of the bottom, probably the bottom one or the top center. But, you know, to get a yellowish green, you have green and you add yellow. So you can mix those to begin. Remember, you can just mix anything. And okay, I like this. I'm adding a little bit of water to it to neutralize it. I will get a little bit of red. And red, again, goes kind of a, a long way fast. So you got a little bit of water on your brush, you grab a swipe or two. I mean, barely a swipe. I just basically touch and press. And then I'm gonna mix that up. And what's nice is you do get that earthy, nice green. I already like it, but for the sake of this, I'll just do a little bit more. Now it's almost brown. So I actually, I it changed it too much. I'll just add more green back in. All right, so all the mixing. If you ever get to a puddle though and you're like, I cannot get this how I want it, there is a time to just scrap that puddle, clean your brush out and start a new one and stop worrying about the one that you can't kind of get quite right. I'm gonna look at our little painting and decide if we've got all of our colors. Oh, we need some kind of a brown. Okay, so for brown, we actually could do a purple and a yellow. Remember how we did that the other day on lesson? I don't have them all in front of me, but like four days ago or something. Um, I could do purple with yellow to make brown. That's using the color wheel as well. So a little bit of purple. I'm going to get into the mustard for this one and until it seems brown. And now I can use this, but once again, you don't have to. Now I'm going to add a little bit of just straight up brown into it. And I love this color, so I'm going to use it. So just because we're learning the concept does not mean you have to do it. I like my puddles. I like the size of them all. Um, and we don't get real dark about anything here. We're kind of just filling them in. Only time we'll use a specific technique will be on the trees if you wanted to do a little bit of wet on wet or just play with your colors. I'd say don't worry about what's happening there. You'll just play in them. So I'm going to move my stuff out of the way. Get that color wheel out of the way. You don't need it anymore. Make sure that you have your painting. And I'm going to zoom in for you. And when we do something like this that has so many little spots that need to be painted, the most important thing to really think of is that you can't paint wet next to wet paint without your colors bleeding. So if I did this root, this roof blue and then painted this tree and they were both wet, I will either have this color of yellow in the roof or blue in my tree. And I don't want that. So we are going to kind of move around. I sometimes like to do it like this. We're gonna start with yellow. We're gonna start with our light colors because then maybe you don't have to clean the water in your jar so soon. <laughs> so I'm grabbing a little bit of my yellow. Um, 
if I, so my puddle is darker, so I just grabbed a little bit of it and added water to another spot. I'll quickly show you this. So I've got this color too. I can do the same thing with that if I want. Remember, if we do wet on wet, we are going to load in our lighter color first. So let's begin with that. Think of this as a circle. You don't need to get all up in those tiny spaces unless you choose to. And then I did the light yellow. I'll lift up any puddling or pooling. You can barely see it, so I know it's pretty light. I'm actually just going to darken it up from the beginning. I don't want really, really dark colors, but if you can't see it, I might go a little darker. And you can notice it's puddling or pooling. I'll touch my brush to that. My brush will kind of act like a sponge. This is pretty good. Now I'll just take the tip of my brush into that orange puddle. And I'm going to actually try to see what happens if I do it here where I wanted a little bit of a darker color. I have to see how much it's going to spread because it's a puddle. So I know if I, since I took from a puddle and not the paint that my color might spread more than I want. This is cute though. I like that. Don't get into your roof. Be real careful with that sharp line there because the roof is in front of the tree. And I think I'm going to leave that and see what happens. It is all glossy and shiny. So if I decide that I want to do anything to it, like I can paint this one. And if this is still reflective, I can still mess around with that one. So I'm going to clean out my brush, wipe it on my towel, and then I'll grab some of this yellow again. And I'm going to fill this one in. Remember, keep those sharp lines around the roof. You kind of want to see the reflection or the texture of the paper through your paint. You don't want puddling or pooling. You've got to grab up any extra. Otherwise, you'll just lose control is what's going to happen. So I'm going to take my brush, just touch it to my towel, get into that orange puddle that I created and I'm going to do the same thing. I can already tell like, oof, it's a lot of water. So I'm going to just do the littlest bit that I can. Um, you can always stop and adjust your puddles and do whatever you need to do. Okay, this is cute. If I'm going to add this, I want to make sure it looks like it's going to go behind the house. So I'm not going to just go dot, dot, dot. I'm going to bring it all the way up to here with the orange which will help with continuity, the idea that that orange is probably a big group that goes that direction. I don't think I want to do anything different with this. I could get darker, but since I'm trying to keep my colors lighter today, I'm going to just let it be and clean my brush. I'm going to look, though. We've got all these white spaces around things. That's great. But look, I got yellow. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make sure that the yellow is the color that I want. And I'm going to start filling these in, things in. So just light on the tip of your brush and don't worry too much about all the corners and the details. You really can take your brush like this, swipe it in, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to do the same thing for the door. I wasn't going to do too many fall things in this little series so it could kind of live in any season, but here we are and this is fall again, so I guess I just can't stop myself. You can do this real cute in summer colors though too. It would be a cute challenge to make it a winter scene, a summer scene, a spring scene. Maybe these are cherry blossom trees. It's kind of fun to think about. All right, is there anything else yellow? So now there is. Look at these. If I look at the leaves, why wouldn't I just grab my brush and my little puddle of yellow that's all ready to go and just fill in a couple of these. So I'm going to. Because in a minute, I'm going to have to dry it. So why not dry it in like a really efficient way? Great. And I'm picking them totally at random. Okay, I say that, but then I say I want to give like a specification. So I guess it's not totally at random. I'm trying to balance it. Not right next to each other, or maybe a couple next to each other, but they're just spread out so that we'll see a variety of colors in those leaves. I do notice that my paint right here got in front of my house, and that does kind of bug me. <laughs> so I'm going to see what I can do before I dry it or after I dry it. So right now I cleaned my brush and dried it, and I'm going to press and then dry my brush. I press and dry my brush. And see, it's it's stain removal, but when you add water like this, there's always, it's it's going to, the paint will always find where the water is, is the avenue for bleeding. So you just, you, you'll probably have to do it a couple times. That's good enough for me, though. I'm going to give it a dry. Okay, I know it's dry because I can't see the light reflecting on it anymore. So I'm going to get into the blues. I'm going to take the color I already mixed up and do the roof. 
If I don't like it, I can mess with my puddle. But I figured we already kind of tested it out there. Let's grab that one and then we can lighten up the one underneath of it. Now let's say your color is so light, you could actually darken up the paint for the building instead if you want, or you could let this fully dry and just paint right over it. You've got options, but we're keeping our colors light today, so I like this. And I do wanna do the house, but I want it to be a different color. So while I've got this on my brush, I'm just gonna find a couple of these little leaves, plop some paint in them, and since we're doing ink, man, ink just kind of fixes everything. So these don't need to be perfect little paint bits because it'll get cleaned up. Oh, actually, you know what? Look at it. Huh. These leaves do have it, but the ones up here don't. It still doesn't matter, but yeah. What a cute little painting. I love this one. I think we can probably go ahead and paint the tree trunks and the chimney right now. So I'm gonna get right into my brown paint. I barely had any paint on my brush, so I'm actually not cleaning it this time, but that's up to you. And I first, okay, the roof is wet still. So I'm actually not gonna do this chimney yet. I'm glad I saw that light reflecting, but it is drying. So it might get there before I, you know, it might dry while I paint these things, I don't know. Cute. So remember, using your brush is about pressure. And so if you want to keep within the lines that you've created, you're light on the tip of your brush for these small spaces. And I've got those filled in. I'm going to now look and see if I see the light reflecting on that roof. And I don't. So... Uh, mm, I do a tiny bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I know that if I paint this right now and it touches, it may bleed into the roof. I can leave a little tiny white space between the two like this and paint this direction. But I will say that it's funny, like that idea is like, oh yeah, of course, just leave some white space. But man, is it harder than you think. Like you'll just accidentally touch the other thing and be annoyed. <laughs> so be careful if you want to do it that way. And I see that the border, like the brickwork on the doorway, is really about the same color. You can change it up and make it oranger, but I'm not going to. I like that this little palette is very cohesive. It all goes together because we're using a lot of the same colors. Cute. Love this little thing. I'm just looking back at this one. It's my map, right? So if you wanted some of your your leaves to be brown, great. I actually don't think I do. So I'm going to mix my paintbrush in with the orange. And I'm going to make them the brownish orange color. So just filling those little guys in. Don't use too much water. This is where you want very tiny puddle. And if you had a bunch of water in here, they're just going to take longer to dry. And like, why? We don't need that. We don't need that in our life. I need some more leaves, so I'm gonna draw them with my brush now. Cute. One more up here. I did the leaves like random. I don't know. Okay, adorable. What do we have left? The shape of the house and the grass, and then I think from there, we're gonna get into ink, yeah. So. Let's just do a really quick dry on this. I'm actually going to just do it on camera. We'll be speedy about it. I have that giant heat gun <laughs> back again. <laughs> I need to get my little one. Okay, um, adorable. So now I'm going to take my blue paint. I'm going to decide if I want to go darker on the house since my paint's kind of light here or not. Why not? I'm going to try darker. So see what you think. Or you can, I guess, wait two seconds and see mine and see if you like it. <laughs> um, I am adding the orange to it because I do like that it's more neutral. And I'm going to make sure I like that color. Oh, well, it's great. It will definitely change things if I do this because it's, it's just darker. So you could honestly leave the house white it would be cute too because we have enough other details to bring it all together. 
Notice when I paint this, I'm going to do one swipe all the way across the top of the windows. And that's what's great when you have things lined up like this. Okay, imperfect. Hold on. There we go. Light on the tip of your brush for this and or control your water when you're getting in these spaces. I kind of have a lot of water there, but I'm going to remember for things like this, we're going to just pull that pull that paint down into these other spaces. So this is very much like our little flat washes, but it's a tiny space, but it's still going around a lot of other things. If you tried this little sketch big and you did it like on a, I don't know, an eight and a half by 11 or a, whatever, just a bigger piece of paper, I think that you might have an easier time getting in these spaces because then all these spaces between are going to be less tiny. So now I dried my brush and I'm just quickly touching it a little bit to lift up any of that excess paint so that I don't see um, darker areas here on the bottom of the house. It's kind of fun to see them as little opposites. I love that. And I'm just looking through. What else do we have? We have our grass. So since this is wet, I can either quick dry it and then do the grass or I can do with the grass where I leave space between the two. I'm gonna just go ahead with the green, but just know if your green touches your house color, they will bleed. Um, so the cautious way is to just um, dry it first. But I'm not worried about this stuff. And you can go right over your stems because we're just doing that with ink, not paint. And just getting in here, going around your little shapes. You don't need a lot of water on your brush right now because it's a tighter space and it'll give you just a little bit more control. See what feels good and just watch what you're doing and adjust as needed. Oops, I'm almost off the camera. I'm concentrating. Okay. I love it. I'm going to leave it. And now I'm just looking between my two. I do notice I could have gotten into red a little bit more and kind of neutralized my green a bit more. It's more neutral on this side. And I think the whole thing's great. I'm going to give it a dry and we'll get out our ink pen. Okay, this is where you decide how big you want the tip of your um, ink to be. If you have a micron pen, I mean, that's fun too, and you can test them out. You can always do them on the back of something. I'll, I'll do it, um, hold on, I will do it on this scrap piece of paper and just show you this felt tip pen is like this. If I press more, I can get it thicker. Notice the difference on this line I pressed, so um, pressure does make a difference. And then this is this extra or ultra fine point Sharpie and I'll just do it next to it. You can see already it's thicker and bolder. Um, I'm even pressing as lightly as I can. And then now when I press even these ones, I'm pressing harder and you can see like that those are thicker too. And you can kind of tell where I lifted and things like that at the edges. For me, when I look at this, this is probably going to be like too aggressive. <laughs> so I just want this one's going to be a little bit of a thinner, simpler line and keep it just more chill. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to use today. But you decide what you like. Um, and then from here, a couple things I want to take note of. I like my corners curved. Do you notice like, especially right here, you can see it more curved corners than a perfect point, but you choose what you like. And then this is where on the trees, if you want to get into that kind of crazy little squiggly line, you can do it. And I can do the same. I can either follow my line right here or ignore it fully and just do another line on top of it and erase what I can still see later and don't want. Same thing over here. I'm just going to go right over the space between the yellow and the white and I'll get that line in. Um, we'll outline everything and then we'll come back and we'll do the line weight thing that we have done before. So I don't want to go really slow and go over my exact markings. Um, so notice I'm just doing like a little scribbly situation like this and I'll go back and erase the pencil or honestly, I maybe I won't. <laughs> Does not bother me. Um, here I might do it because you'll see it more if I don't. So I'll go pretty close to my little scribbles this way. And then on this one, this might be more how I paint it, but maybe with like a stipply edge to it, I'm not sure. But um, for experiment's sake, I just kind of want you to see that because this ink is like the darker color and it's on top, 
you, you, I don't think you're mad at either one of them. So you can't go wrong with them. Now, the house is kind of in front of the trees, which is why we can't see the full branches. So we want this to be a nice, clean shape, unaffected by our trees. I'm going to just pull those into curves and then remember to move your paper however you want. Nice. And then there's no rhyme or reason. We're just going to keep outlining. I know someone who in their home they have photos, like they have a whole line of photos of their front door of every house they've lived in so like like if this is their dining room here's their table or whatever and then just a bunch of pictures like this and it's all the door with like the number of the house they lived in and I'm like oh I wish I would have thought of that it's just so like charming and it's also um like meaningful artwork you know All right, if your body's feeling uncomfortable, relax in your chair. Stop and stretch if you want. I'm not gonna make these perfect. I like what happens when I just do them in a sort of doodly way. I don't need them to be, I want them lined up. So there are, there are things that matter to me when we looked at how to put this in a perfect, kind of perfectly straight row as if it's one big you know, rectangle. But then when I get into the ink, that's where I can, I can kind of adjust it a little bit because I planned well and things are spaced right. If that makes any sense. One thing I'm kind of like to be particular about is the space between things. And that's not just with artwork like this. It's also when you're hanging a gallery wall at your house. Um, to me, it's the space between things being equal that's more important than how you hung the artwork. I do like to decorate. Okay, I'm going to go over these sprigs on the bottom, but I'm not going to go over the outline of the ones that are kind of in the air. And remember, you don't have to follow your shapes exactly. So if you want to clean up anything that you did, now's the time. Sorry, my hand is just all up in here today. Okay. I still need to do my brickwork around the door and on the chimney. And I'm just going to do little bits. Sometimes I think loose is better than filling them all in perfectly because if you try to do them perfect and then something isn't, I think it's a lot more noticeable. Get my door handle. What a cute little scene we have created. So now we're going to just do our exercise in line weight. And um, that was just maybe doing one more line. Can't remember what day this is from. I can look it up though. Um, line weight was day 11. So if you want to go watch that video next, you can. But we're just darkening up wherever there may be a shadow. So for me, that's inside the top of the window, under the window. You could put it on one side as well, but I'm not going to. Maybe the top of the chimney has a little shadow right there. Um, inside these windows, I'll do the same thing. I'll get this line right at the top. And then once again, under the frame. I think it's cool to see what happens. They just pop out a little. On this one, you can really see my line, and that bugs me. I didn't really even close it off nicely. So be gentle about this one. I'd say that feels like kind of too aggressive to me. You could go under, but what I do want to do still is add some little grass. And for me, that's just like a zigzag, scribbly line. It's a broken line. I don't like to do it all as one. Um, but do whatever seems good. You can add some grass down to the front if you want to. Maybe some little bits here and there. Um, this is so adorable. I'm going to do this at the, the that line weight at the bottom of my roof. 
Oh, that made a nice, lovely difference, I think. Notice it, the difference with the bottom line of the roof here versus this one. So that's a good one for sure. And I think that's enough for me today. So I'm going to just initial my work today. I don't have much space. And um, I hope you liked this one. I think color the color wheel is a pretty cool thing to talk about. And this was a fun sketch. So thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Make sure to take your calendar if you've got it. And you can grab it and we can, with these colors that we created today from the color wheel, we can just swipe that off and we're all set.